Welcome to the Basics of Register 360, Part 7. In this video, we're going to cover importing data from the blk to go hand scanner. Now, I don't have an open project yet, so I'm just going to click up here and create a new project. <clears throat> Type in a name, click OK. Now, there's a few different ways that you can import data that's been collected with a blk to go the first is to actually connect directly to the device. So if you have the device connected to your computer, you would just come up here and click on the BLK to go icon. Once it's discovered to your device, you just hit connect. And then hit add to project. Once it's finished reading everything, you'll see that I've got two different walks here. Um, if I didn't want to import all the walks that were on the device, I can simply just click one of them off over here. Um, if I did want to import, then obviously I would leave them all clicked. And then one other thing of importance to, to note with the BLK to go when you're importing directly from the device is you do have that option to be able to save a copy of the raw data to a local folder. So if I wanted to do that here, I would just click on that and choose wherever I wanted to store those. So let's just say I wanted to store them right there. And now a copy of that would be stored directly um, to my computer as well as importing it. The other thing is if I wanted to export directly to an E57 uh, file, a colorized E57, then I would just go ahead and click this here. Um, the biggest deal with that is it doesn't uh, import anything into Register 360 in that case. It's just reading the data and directly exporting to an E57 file. So we're going to go ahead and just close this out for a second because I've already downloaded these. So I'm going to open the file back up. Now, the other way I could do it is I can either browse to my files or I can just simply um, drag and drop them into the area right here. And you can see I've got four separate walks um, that were all renamed out in the field. Again, if I didn't want to import any one of those, I could turn them off. Um, but before we actually click the import button, there's a few other things we want to talk about over here. So you'll notice now that when I drag and drop the files, the option to save a raw file is gone from over here. Uh, that's because it recognizes that I've already downloaded those files, so it doesn't give me that option. Um, if I didn't want to import images, I can simply just unselect uh, the box next to that. But in this case, I'm going to leave that checked. Again, I can just export straight to an E57 still, even though I've had those, it won't import, but I still have that option. Um, filter level, if I click this off, it's going to import all of the data that's collected from the device. If I have this on, um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to grid the point cloud um, to clean it up a little bit. So you have either um, low point density, which is a higher filter, or you have high point density, which is a lower filter. And then the last thing to cover here is my trajectory settings or my waypoint intervals. So what this actually does is it, it basically creates a camera location um, at a specified distance along the trajectory that was created with the BLK to go. So if I wanted um, a camera every 10 feet, I could type that in. Um, in this case, uh, this walk was outside. So I typically hold those to every 25 to maybe 50 feet. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 25. And then we're going to go ahead and hit import. All right, so we'll just go ahead and click OK, and you can see that all four of our setups, our walks, have been imported into the project. And at this point, you'd be able to basically go in and do cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration.